makers, I'm Joe the 3D Maker Noob and today I want to answer a question. Not sure if you've asked it, but I've asked it and that is, how would the 3D printing life be without this little tool right here? Now this scraper has pretty much been with me since the beginning of this channel. It has removed probably thousands of prints of build plates and honestly speaking I don't know what I would do without it. What I do know is that some of my fingers would have been much happier without this tool. However, as you may recall I did a review of the Anycubic i3 Mega. It was a printer which I found to be extremely solid, produced amazing quality prints and as you can see I still have it and today it's part of my 3D printing farm because I actually do trust it with prints that are going to customers because it prints reliably, it is accurate, it has a power off resume function and it also has a run out filament sensor. Now after I posted that review, Anycubic reached out to me and said, hey Joe, would you like to try the Anycubic Ultra Base? And I said, what is that? And apparently is this, this is the Anycubic Ultra base. It's basically a piece of glass with adhesive tape which is uh, thermoconductive. However, it's coated with a particular surface and honestly speaking I have no idea what that surface is made of. All I know is that it's pretty much magic. When I got the kit it had two build plates on it and it also had a heat bed which I replaced on the Anycubic i3 Mega. That wasn't necessarily a very good idea and I'll get to that in a bit. However nowadays they only sell the glass print bed uh, as far as I'm aware and to be completely honest that is all you possibly need. I've had this thing now stuck on the i3 Mega for a few months now and I'd probably run it through about 300 hours of printing so it has had quite some tests. Now just to give you an idea I printed these samples and I used PLA, ABS, PTG and also some CPE. Now when it heats up the, um, the material actually sticks really really well on the build surface without any additives. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of Magigo. This is probably one of those build surfaces which I haven't had any need to put Magigo on because everything I printed with it actually stuck to it. Now the magic happens when the print is finished, the bed cools down completely and you come to remove the um, the part. I, I cannot possibly explain this through camera, not even with video, but the little effort that is required to move prints off of this build plate is impressive and whether it's small or large it doesn't matter. Once it cools you can literally just push it slightly and it will come off instantly. Just to give you guys an idea, first I tried it with some PLA. Obviously I know all of these work but PLA is possibly the best example. It sticks really well, obviously it doesn't lift. Once it cools down very little effort and it comes off. Same goes with ABS. I've tried some uh, filamentive ABS. It stuck perfectly. There was no lifting or warping. Once the bed cooled down, came off very easily. With PTG and um, CPE, there was just a little bit more force needed. Nothing, nothing extraordinary, just a little bit more force. But both the PTG from a printer pro and the CPE from filamentive came off incredibly easy. Now while this base, while this this surface is absolutely awesome and to be completely honest when you have a printing farm like I do I, I you can actually see the real use of this because there is no fuss you, you just literally just move the prints wipe it off with some alcohol and start over again and you're done. Now as I mentioned the Anycubic i3 Mega has a power off resume function and that is extremely useful when you're doing an intricate print that takes forever and obviously having the ultra base helps with getting that print stuck properly and then removed. However when the electricity goes off and if it goes off for long enough that the bed cools down completely what will happen is that when the power comes back on and you want to resume that print this is what happens. Yes, unfortunately 
Regenerating heat does not mean that it will stick again to the build plate. It would have separated once the bed has cooled down, which is a bit of an issue. Now, what I've done recently is I've installed a few UPSs on my printer. So if the electricity goes off or if it trips because of something else, at least it gives me that 15, 30 minutes time to actually put the electricity back on. Um, sometimes electricity goes off for just a few minutes just to mess with my head and ruin a few prints. So yeah, I have UPSs for that now. However, that is something to keep in mind. And another thing to keep in mind is that if you are going to buy this and you do come across one with a uh, heat bed included in the package, personally speaking, I would try to attach it first to the existing heat bed and the reason for that is the one that came shipped with this is actually quite thin the uh, holes for the screws that attach to um, the, um, the the frame aren't exactly wide enough so the screw protrudes a little bit so the bed doesn't actually lay flat with the heated uh, build plate so it becomes a bit weird. So to be completely honest, I might change it back to the original build plate, remove the build tech type surface that was there and attach the Anacubic Ultra Base directly to that. Another thing to keep an eye out is that you need to let the build plate cool down completely before removing prints. I had tried to remove prints while the bed was still hot and actually they're actually attached quite well. And if you try to use a scraper, there is a chance you might damage the, um, the Ultra Base as I have done with my own when I was printing a few more things with the CP because it tends to stick quite well. And I tried to remove it while it was still hot and I ended up slightly damaging the bed. So yeah, just something to keep an eye out. As for the price, I think it runs for about $20 um, for, um, for a base, which it's actually not that bad. You can get them from Amazon, from AliExpress. I'll leave links in the video description. But to be completely honest, it's actually well worth it. I'm, I'm glad I have to because this can keep on printing. And once it's, once it's completely destroyed, if I ever destroy it, I'll just have a spare one to go along. And I actually might buy a couple more for a few more printers that I use. And that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave links to the Anacubic Ultra Base in the video description. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.